Hey, Dad. <laughs> Come on. I got you, dude. Oh. Come on. So this is the plan. We're gonna get real dirty right now and go dig in low tide for some clams. Tide should be really low in a couple hours, negative 1.7 in two hours. So let's go do this. Look at that. That's a huge one right there. That is a huge neck. Let's see if I can get it. I had no intention of harvesting any sort of horse neck clam or big clams. So I had no tools, but I still, in a limited amount of time, was able to harvest two huge horse neck clams with no tools at all. And I'll tell you how, how I did it. And I came here today with Kevin from Catch and Cook California, as well as Chensi, also known as Fishing Chef, with the intention of harvesting steamer clams, which I did, and I limited with 50. And I'll make a separate video for that. But today I'll show you how I'm gonna harvest and forage for horse neck clams with no tools. So first what I do is I walk gently. This is sort of in a very muddy area. You can tell there's a lot of eel grass here and they love to be around this sort of area. And I'm looking around, I'm looking around and then sometimes you can see, actually you can see squirts, huge squirts that come out of the, the ground and that's a very big indication that there could be a horse neck clam there or some sort of huge clam and so I'm walking and I didn't see a squirt but I'm looking down on the ground and I'm looking at these holes that these clams make and I see a huge neck sticking out this is the siphon of these clams and so what I did was I sneak up on it you don't want to you don't want to step on the ground too hard because they sense that motion they sense that motion there they they just retract their siphon and they go straight down and, you, and it's and it's really hard. But for me, without tools, what I do is I sneak up on it and I grab the siphon. Try not to grab it too hard because it does break and it breaks pretty easily. But I grab it and I hold on to it and you're gonna, and if, if it's a big clam, you're gonna feel it. It's, it'll, it'll be pulling. You're gonna feel it. It's gonna try to retract and you're gonna feel it the muscles and you're gonna feel it pulling on you but I hold on to the siphon and I sort of use that as a guide as a guide all the way down to its shell itself and, and once you grab hold a good hold of the shell it might take some time but you could usually break it loose from the mud and the dirt oh my god I feel the shell oh my god I'm, I'm all the way in there I'm all the way in there, dude. Oh, it's a huge one, dude. Oh my god. Mind you, I'm doing this with no equipment. Oh yeah, I got you now. I got him now. I got him now. I'm all the way in the bottom. I'm feeling his butt. Yeah, baby. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here. Here it comes. Oh yeah. Oh. Kevin. Yeah. Look at this. It's pretty fat. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on. I got you, dude. Oh. Come on. Oh my god. Yeah. Is it yep. Yes. Oh god. Oh. This guy was a tough one. Oh my goodness. I just want to break his siphon now. Oh. Yes. Oh. 
I know. <laughs> oh, I had. To. Oh. You're stuck too. I don't know. Yeah, he, yeah, landscape. All right, here we go. I'm gonna just uh, I might just lay here. <laughs> oh god. I am so dirty. Oh my goodness. I laid down and the water went into my waders. Oh, so no. like, and I'm oh, feeling no. the drip. <laughs> <laughs> this time we have some bean thread that's been soaking in the water for a bit. Probably about 20 minutes or so. and then some parsley. First thing we're gonna do is blanch these guys. And that skin comes off real easily after the, after the blanching. remove that and keep all the white meat so it's dark meats all the guts and stuff just gonna cut it straight through so then we could get access to the inside and that's you know want to rinse that off might be sand in there Definitely want to rinse out all the sand in the siphon. Yeah. Just going to slice at a slanted angle here. And here's some of the clam meat that's all diced up. Gonna add a bit of salt in there. Just a sprinkle of salt. Just a little bit of cornstarch in there. And then we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. Got some ginger here. some of that ginger in here and a splash of that seafood soy sauce right there mix that in well oil here heating up then we're going to take that bean thread and drop it right in it's probably been about a minute in there Just gonna put the rest of the clam meat onto the clams itself. A little bit of oil into each of those. Five minutes. And it's been five minutes. Oh baby. Sprinkle some green onions on there and some of that parsley, baby just so the parsley and green onion cook a little bit. Oh man, are you 
guys ready for the tasting table. Look at this. It's in the clamshell itself. And it has a bunch of clams, has that vermicelli noodles, parsley on it, a little bit of green onions. First thing I'm gonna do is try the clam meat. Mmm. Good. Might have been slightly overcooked, but it's so fresh. So good. That's what's up. I've had these in restaurants, never made it at home. But man, amazing. Shout out to my dad, because he's the one that cooked this. And he used to be a chef, actually, before he's doing what he's doing now. But, man, it's amazing. This is actually better than what I've had at the restaurants. Mm -hmm. You guys have got to try this. This is... Yeah. My dad doesn't want to be on camera, so... He's the guy behind all this. One big last bite. Oh man, that was legit. That was. Can't even talk, that was a big bite. But, man, <laughs> that was really good. If you guys enjoyed this, and if you guys wanna see more of my dad's recipes and cooking, hit the like and comment, let me know. I'm trying to do more catches and cooks at home because you could be a little more creative, you have more ingredients, a little more comfort. So let me know. Um, appreciate the support as always. If you guys want to see more, subscribe. And uh, until next time, peace. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm done. I gotta watch the rest at home. Yes.